Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. Um, usual trouble with the technology. It was claiming that it couldn't find my camera. So I'm, I'm hoping it can find my camera now. It, it'd be lovely as ever just to have one or two signs of life. There we go from Lindsay, Ruth and Ellie. That shows it's working. We are continuing our little journey through the Psalms, asking the Lord to retune our hearts as we learn to sing these songs together. And I don't know about you, but I'm certainly speaking to people who are finding it quite hard to focus on reading the Bible and uh, praying for themselves. And we're such kind of Western individualists that we think the answer is to do it alone. Of course, we're not created to do the Christian life alone. Uh, we're given one another and so that's why we're gathering together to look at a psalm, to pray together, and that is a good thing. Uh, we're in Psalm 15. I'm going to do what we've done each time, which is um, I'm going to read it, make a few comments, and then pray. Psalm 15. A Psalm of David. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose way of life is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbour and casts no slur on others who despises a vile person, but honours those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. Verse 1. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The sacred tent, the holy mountain, they symbolize the presence of God. And the question is, who may dwell in, live in the presence of God? And it really matters because you remember from Psalm 14 verse 6, the Lord is their refuge, the only place to be safe is to be with him. So who can be with him? Who may dwell in his sacred tent? Who may live on his holy mountain? I was very struck that the description we get in verses 2 to 5 of, of the person who can live with God is not of someone who performs religious rituals. Do you notice that? It's not a description of someone who goes to church, says their prayers, knows all the answers, comes from the right background. It's a description of someone who reflects the character of God. Verse 2, it's the one whose way of life is blameless, who does what is righteous and who speaks the truth from their heart. They do what's right, they speak the truth. And that is worked out all in the whole area of relationships with other people. So look at the things they don't do, verse 3. They don't slander. They don't do wrong to a neighbour. They don't cast a slur on others. Look at the things they do do, verse 4. They, they do despise a vile person. They do honour those who fear the Lord. They do keep an oath. Who can live with the Lord? Who may live on your holy mountain? Someone like this. Someone who reflects your character. Someone who's like you. I think, great, but who is like this? I think there's a, a danger that we'll, we'll read this psalm a little bit like the Sermon on the Mount and some of us will read it and go, right, I must try harder to be better, to be more like this. I must pull my socks up and get my act together. And others will go, no, 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 no. The whole point is it's not me. This is not me. That's why Jesus came. And of course, that's true. 
the king who sings these psalms points to the king. The king who said, in my father's house are many rooms. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. So who can live with God? Those for whom Jesus, King Jesus, has prepared a place. Those whom he invites in. And this is, this is not me, because I, I am not blameless. This does not describe me. But what does Paul say in Ephesians 1 verse 4? For he, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, chose us in him, in Christ, before the creation of the world to be blameless in his sight. Who, who may dwell in God's sacred tent? Who may live on his holy mountain? I may. In Christ. I may. So do you see how the psalm sends us not just to kind of pull up our socks and get our act together. It sends us to Christ in him. I may dwell in the presence of the Lord. But I think this is where it's a little bit like the Sermon on the Mount. Because the danger is some of us stop there. The psalm sends us to Christ. Yes, it's in him I live with the Lord. But Christ then sends us back to the psalm and says, this is what life with the Lord looks like. This is classic shape of the Christian life, isn't it? In Christ, you do live with God. Now, in Christ, live like someone who lives with God. Be who you are. So I think singing this psalm means singing, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that in you I can come in to life with God. I can dwell in his presence safely. End of verse 5. I will never be shaken. But singing this psalm also means singing, help me. By your spirit, help me to live as someone who lives in your presence. Help me not just to be religious, to go to church, to say my prayers, to know the answers, to rely on my background. Help me to be for real, to live out the life with you, the relationship with you that you saved me for. To live out a life that reflects you, your character, your ways. So Lord, help me. Help me that today would be a day where my life would be blameless, where I would do what is right, and I would speak what is true, and I would treat other people in a way that reflects you. Let's pray. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that in you we may dwell in the presence of the Lord, safe with him forever. And Lord Jesus, today please help us. Help us to to be who you have made us, to live as those who dwell in the presence of the Lord. That by your Spirit, today, we would reflect your ways in all that we do and all that we say. And we pray that for the honour of your great name. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. See you again tomorrow.